Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Benoni. I'm vice chair of the Bloomfield, Connecticut Economic Development Commission. Welcome to our first webinar that the town of Bloomfield has planned for businesses as they re-enter the COVID-19 environment. The new normal prov promoting Bloomfield businesses. The EDC is an ongoing supporter of Bloomfield business townwide and continues to provide support and encouragement to businesses and ask our residents also to support local business. First of all, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce to you Suzette DeBeatum Brown, the Honorable Suzette, who is mayor of the town of Bloomfield, Connecticut, who will provide you her opening remarks. Suzette? <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Michelle. Um, this is, we're charting new territory here, Bloomfield. Um, with the pandemic of COVID-19, we have experienced things that we've never experienced before. And we know that our businesses are challenged. Um, they're seeing their profits go down. They're seeing their payroll go down. They're seeing closures. They're seeing a new way of doing business. It's not business as usual. And it won't be business as usual for the foreseeable future. So uh, Bloomfield has decided to get on the bandwagon with our recovery coordinators, uh, Ms. Michelle Benoni, uh, who introduced me, and Ms. Vera Smith Winfrey from the um, Chamber of Commerce. Our recovery um, committee includes Jose Geiner, um, Denise and uh, Robodeau, and Mike Gorman from Gorman and York. So Bloomfield, we may not have all the answers when it comes to helping your business to recover. But I promise you, we will find the answers. We will get the support that you need. We will reach out to other professionals. We will reach out to other agencies to help you to recover. Your uh, vitality is important to us as a community. Your success is our success. And whatever it is that we can do to help, we are committed to doing that. And with that commitment, this committee is here. The experts, as uh, Michelle talked about, the EDC and Goldman and York and Jose and our chamber, the experts are here and they will find other experts to answer the questions um, to help us through this process. So welcome to uh, our first um, webinar. I think we have three more after this, but please know that the coordinators and the committee, they are here to help you your success once again is our success. I also just want to acknowledge that the deputy mayor, Mr. David Mann is also a part of this conversation on today. Once again, Michelle, thank you so very much for the wonderful introduction. Um, turning it back over to you. Okay, thank you, Mayor Suzette. Uh, once again, the name of our, our, our webinar is The New Normal, Pro Promoting Bloomfield Businesses. So, we wonder, what does the new normal look like in Bloomfield? Well, we have some ideas. We know that the new normal has to be agile. It has to be specific in its mention. It has to be sen sensitive in its mention. That's a human response to what we're all going through, as you know. So looking at more specifics from the standpoint of those people in business who are actually dealing with this on a specific business basis, it starts to look like a different, more concise target that we're talking about informationally. So first we ask, what has changed about how we do business in Bloomfield? We already know the things that I just mentioned that we have to do. We also know we need to communicate in signage. If you've been out to a market or a store and sometimes you're confused about what you should do to be in compliance and be safe, businesses are coming up with a lot of positive solutions to those problems. Also, we worry, can businesses sustain these challenges in the short term as well as the long term, since none of us knows how long we're going to be involved here. As a beginning to this discussion, our town planning consultant, Mike Goman, as a principal of the consulting firm of Goman in York, assisted the town in beginning our inquiry about how businesses are managing during the pandemic and how the town of Bloomfield, particularly with the support of the health division and other town agencies, might be of assistance to businesses. 
But first we had to know what the businesses were actually doing and what they thought about what they were doing. In other words, sort of a self-evaluation. And to that end, Bloomfield businesses received a survey that asked in general, are you open? How are you doing? And what do you need to keep your business going? Denise Robideau of Goldman and York was instrumental in the production and implementation of the survey and is with us today, as is Mike Goldman, whom I mentioned earlier. Please keep in mind, questions may be entertained. There are few enough of, of, of us and people who know what Bloomfield is proposing to do to answer your questions, but we're also very seriously looking at input from everyone, whether they be businesses, whether they be residents who have questions about how they can support local businesses, which is also very important. So um, in uh, conjunction with um, Vera Smith Winfrey, who is my colleague and my partner in our participation as coordinator for Bloomfield, the business recovery program for COVID-19 got kicked off with a survey. So our challenges in the program are keeping existing businesses open, continuing to encourage new businesses to come to Bloomfield, which is very tough in any market, but in this one in particular, and finding ways to assist Bloomfield businesses in the challenges they face during the pandemic term. So we're here to share the information from the business survey, look for ways to assist business through communication, messaging, and supporting. And I will certainly be calling on Denise and Mike to add any comments that they have because they're surveying experts and also Bowman in York has a uh, program to assist businesses in general with regard to the challenges of the COVID-19 epidemic. Um, we, we are here most importantly though, not to tell you stuff, but to listen to what everyone has to say and take it to heart with regard to how perhaps we may then be able to assist you with your customers and being supported in the existing new ways. So why don't I ask Denise, first of all, to run down some of the criteria that were listed on the survey, on the uh, webinar description with regard to how to look at this question, because there are some very, very important things that we need to know in order to proceed. How about it, Denise? I think definitely, I think what we were looking at, we wanted to know, first of all, what types of businesses, and when we look at the survey, we got across the board, all type of businesses from manufacturing to retail to services to healthcare. Um, and I, then we wanted to know what, how they were communicating with their customers. And we wanted to know if they were open, what difficulties they were having, were they getting financial assistance? So we did some broad overview questions for these people. And I think, you know, Michelle, I know you're going to go over later on um, some of the percentages of open. But I think the, the biggest takeaway is that people are telling us they need to communicate with the town and they need to communicate with their customers. And they need to communicate that it's a safe environment for them to go out in right now. Okay. Um, Mike, do you have anything to say in the broader sense sure. that you would like to contribute about how municipalities and cities are looking at the challenges with regard to these two important items and some of the thoughts that you have about re response to those concerns. Sure, thank you, Michelle. And, and let me start uh, first of all by saying thank you to the mayor uh, for your leadership on setting up this uh, recovery committee, uh, this terrific initiative, and uh, to Michelle as a co-chair of this uh, committee uh, the work is, that uh, you folks are doing is terrific and we're, we're very glad to be part of it. Um, in terms of what's going on out there, uh, you know, there, it's not, uh, there, there's a lot, a lot of bad news that gets published. You know, there's a lot of reports out uh, on almost a daily or weekly basis about the number of businesses that, were, that will close and not reopen. Uh, you know, there's certainly a high percentage of those businesses that are being most impacted uh, that are in the small business segment and particularly in personal services. Uh, in other words, services which really can't be delivered online. Uh, 
and that includes food services as well as a lot of personal services. Uh, the impact on services has been dramatic, uh, businesses that are in that, that segment, uh, because they need to connect with their customer. They can't, uh, it's not something you can order online. Uh, additional issues that we see a lot of, uh, you know, small businesses and particularly the micro, what we call micro businesses have a, a very limited access to capital and everyone needs capital in a time of a crisis. Uh, right now, the horizon, uh, you know, it's, we're seeing projections that this, the, these conditions may continue in one form or another for another 12 months. So it's a, it's a, it's a situation of enormous uncertainty. And we know that people uh, and markets uh, don't like uncertainty. Uh, I should point out, by the way, that uh, it may have been mentioned earlier in your opening comments, but this is one of four webinars that you're doing, I guess, uh, over the next month or so. Uh, so I hope people stay tuned uh, for the, the next ones. But this one, as I understand it, is focused a little on communication. And then in our work, uh, you know, we know uh, that uh, in a normal set of circumstances for small businesses, communication is key. Uh, and when you're in the midst of a crisis, uh, communication becomes not just the key, but becomes critical. And you have sort of three audiences. You have your customers, uh, your employees, your landlord in many cases, and certainly your banker. And there's communication that is required with all of those. Uh, you know, certainly with your employees and your customers, you know, one of the first focuses of communication is around what you're doing to keep everybody safe. You know, how are you running your business in a way that's gonna protect people from some of the concerns that are out there with respect to COVID-19? And that's not just, uh, you know, when come, people come into your business, but it's everybody that interacts with your business your suppliers when they're delivering things, uh, and of course, uh, also your employees. And other issues that we see where we think it's very important that businesses focus uh, in, in terms of communication in this crisis time, in addition to safety protocols, is operating hours. You know, if we see things where they're not, uh, they're not keeping their customers up to speed on when they're open and how many hours they're open, that's just a, that's a fundamental. I mean, store hours or your business hours are, are critical and keep that up to date and keep, uh, keep your customers up to date. Uh, we do see people getting discouraged and they stop communicating about what they've got going on in their business. And you know, you're, you're running a business. It's a different set of circumstances, different market conditions, but don't lose sight of the fact that you should continue to promote your business and you should continue to run specials or whatever thing, whatever kinds of things you would do in, in a normal set of circumstances circumstances to promote, you know, don't lose sight that you're still in business, hopefully, and keep promoting. Uh, and then, of course, uh, listen a lot to your customers. Uh, you know, what are you hearing from them? And uh, when you hear from them, uh, you know, be prepared to adjust and, and take advantage of whatever opportunities come out of that feedback. With your employees, of course, the safety protocols are important. Same sort of things so of listening to their concerns and making adjustments. We hear a lot about communicating with landlords and Landlords and banks are in a different category. Uh, critical components of communication with them is to be proactive. Don't wait until they call you. That is usually a, a terrible thing when they're calling you to find out what's going on. So be proactive. Let your banker and your landlord know how you're doing. Uh, give them some forecasts. Sometimes the best you can do are anecdotal. You know, many of us don't know where the next or what the next month is going to look like, but do the best you can. We can't be very candid. There, there's nothing you can say to them that they're not hearing already. So don't be afraid to tell them that, you know, things aren't going well or whatever it might be. You know, be very candid, be very honest, uh, and then update your communication with your landlords and your bankers uh, regularly. Uh, you need to be able to give them a sense of uh, what, what's going on, how you're doing. In addition to that, though, but give them a sense of uh, what you need from them and what do you think you may need in the future from them, depending on how things go? So when you're communicating with your landlord, now's the time to say, hey, look, you know, in order to stay in business, uh, I'm really going to need to start going to a lower rent structure, half rent for a period of time. Be specific, but get an ask in front of them and, and get that discussion open. You know, you don't need necessarily need an answer that day, but you want to put it on the table. Banks, of course, are very similar to landlords. The conversation's a little bit different. Um, it, you know, there are some specific things. If you took advantage of the PPP or uh, EIDL programs, you need to stay in touch with your banker on those programs. If you have debt with your banker, 
uh, you know, put, put on the table like you did with the landlord about rent restructuring, uh, put on the table that you may need to restructure the debt and, and again, have that conversation earlier. Don't, don't wait until it's a crisis and then call them and tell them that you can't make tomorrow's payment. That's just, that's not a confidence builder when you're working with the, uh, with banks. In a worst case scenario, if you, if you do hit the wall, if your business uh, does hit the wall, so to speak, and you're in real trouble of, of being able to survive uh, as an ongoing operation, first of all, you really want to try to stay ahead of all that. And, and hopefully when that happens, or by the time that happens, if it does, you are, you've had a lot of uh, conversations with both your landlord and your banker. Uh, but uh, you know, if you haven't, do the best you can to kind of get them up to speed now. Uh, if you if you think you are in danger of that, we're encouraging people to go ahead and consider uh, consider having a consultation or consultative meeting with a bankruptcy lawyer. And one of the things that we we talk to a lot about with businesses that we're working with is, you know, people unfortunately have to avoid that feeling of gee, if I if I have to talk about bankruptcy, I'm talking about my, the failure, my failure, and and there's a feeling of uh, defeat or stigma, stigma to that, you got to get over that. You're running a business, understand that sometimes uh, a bankruptcy filing is a necessary tool. And most importantly, remember that, you know, the, the government agency set up the bankruptcy system to be a tool that's expressly intended uh, to help businesses uh, restructure so they can continue operating. And you shouldn't be ashamed of that. That's a, that's a tool that should, that's out there. Uh, you know, if you really are, feel like you're in danger, have that conversation early. Remember, you know, if you pick up the newspaper, you're going to read about J.C. Penney just going through a structured uh, restructuring under a bankruptcy Chapter uh, 11 provision. Neiman Marcus, Chapter 11 filing, organize themselves. You know, J.C. Penney is going to come out of it, uh, and that's that's what it's there for. So there are many, many others. Uh, so, you know, talk to your banks, talk to a lawyer if you feel like you need to but be proactive. With respect to the town, uh, and I started out saying, you know, my admiration for the town of Bloomfield and, and the mayor and taking initiative on this. Uh, stay in touch with your local uh, economic development people. You know, all the people on this, uh, on this uh, webinar are here really to help. Uh, we're, we're here to answer questions. Uh, don't hesitate to ask if you need something, or you think there's something that we might be able to provide. We're, we're a consulting firm to the town of Bloomfield on economic development matters. Everyone else on this webinar is, is involved in economic development. If, if you get hold of us, we'll do what we can. Uh, take advantage of any local programs that are out there. And I want to echo what the mayor said earlier about uh, we're all here to help. I mean, that's critical. You know, the, the whole point of the, all the work that's being done and on doing the survey and doing the four webinars that the town has put together uh, you know, it's all aimed at trying to help. So, you know, communicate lots, communicate proactively, talk to us, talk to the town. And uh, I think if we can all do that and stay focused, we'll get through all of this. Sorry, I, well, you, you didn't expect that lengthy answer, did you? But you, <laughs> well, don't, want get, you don't want to get me started on these things. <laughs> there's a wealth of information. We do a lot of this work in there. As we know from having your testimony at our EDC meetings to keep us abreast of realistic portrayals of what's going on in the market. Sometimes that's hard to hear, and it's especially hard to hear now that we know how much our local businesses are affected. Right. But here we do. So also, thank you, Mike, very much. Also with us today is Ho Jose Geiner. Jose is the Town of Bloomfield Town Planner. He's also Economic Development Coordinator for the town. and. I would like to ask you, Jose, from just for some off-the-cuff comments about what you hear day-to-day -day with regard to existing businesses and proposed businesses about how they are affected by this business and financial climate, particularly due to the fact that despite everything, what you do goes on day-to-day -day, every day. And how are the practical concerns that businesses have being reflective in what they look to you to help them out with. Would you give us a few comments? Sure, sure, Michelle. Thank you. And I, and I, and I want to echo what the mayor said before about, uh, you know, we may not have all the answers uh, or, or not, maybe uh, not a lot of them, but uh, we, we can't uh, 
be in a po position to know each individual building, what their uh, each individual business, what their concerns or what their individual problems may be. But we certainly could be facilitators and, and certainly can look up and, and try to find the solutions for you. There's a lot of information out there from various sources that, that I get bombarded with every single day uh, through emails, uh, you know, webinars and, and, and different groups that have different things going on. So uh, we certainly uh, welcome uh, being a, a, an intermediary for, for some of the, especially the smaller businesses that may not have the time or, or the personnel to, to keep up with these type of things. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I'm hearing from, from the, I've had some same concerns that were mentioned before, uh, you know, I've talked to some restaurants that were, when we, when we first went out and, and did our, our first survey was, was when we were trying to find out if we, if we can facilitate outdoor dining for restaurants by, by uh, coming up with some common sense rules that, that uh, would somehow bypass the lengthy planning and zoning commission approval process. Uh, and surprisingly, we found that the, the ones that we did contact, uh, uh, a lot of them were not interested in, in doing outside dining and sort of banking on waiting for the, the executive orders uh, to come through that they could do indoor dining. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, those came through and then they found out that people were reluctant uh, to, to come indoors. And, and so we did get a couple of uh, re requests uh, or, or, or inquiries after that. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and we did, you know, uh, unfortunately, the, you know, the, the layout and some of them just, uh, you know, between them and their landlord, they weren't able to agree on, 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 on some of the, um, so, some of the solutions. I know, I know that Back East uh, Brewery was one of them that, that, that did, was able to put up a tent. Uh, we facilitated that through the building and zoning process. Uh, and also, uh, 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 I think uh, the the, two, the other brewery, Hooker Brewery, also had a uh, expanded outdoor area that 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 they were able to utilize. So, uh, in terms of industry, I think industries uh, are not as affected as, as small businesses because they have their customers and, and the production uh, line. Uh, uh, at least I haven't heard of of any issues uh, other than the fact that they had some of them, like the, the big corporations like Command, had to put up a tent. Uh, so, so did Home Goods, and, and, and we were able to facilitate that without having to go through any planning and zoning commission approvals. Uh, just make sure that they met all the fire and safety codes, uh, and, and they were able to get those up and running uh, in, in, in a fairly quick time. So, you know, we're, we're being as flexible as we can. We're being flexible uh, with our signage, and as long as it's, you know, it's productive in, in the sense that, that letting people know that they're still open, um, you know, that... Uh, We've had a couple of restaurants, you know, that, that closed, and then when they opened up again, obviously wanted to make sure that their clientele knew that they were they were still up and running. So we, we were able to uh, not look the other way in a sense, but say uh, we approved their signage as, as temporary signage, uh, uh, mm -hmm. facilitate their their reopening. So, uh, like I said, we're 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 trying to be as flexible as possible. Uh, uh, as Mike said, uh, you know, uncertainty is, is certainly a uh, our enemy and, 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 and not know, you know, things change on a weekly basis. Uh, so it's, it's what we don't know and what we may come back. Uh, hopefully, you know, when we do know something, we'll post it on our webpage. Just, just if I may, I just want to share something uh, just so people will know to come to our webpage. Um, and, and I'll share my screen briefly. Uh, we do have a webpage uh, for economic development. You can see the, uh, the, where to go to BloomfieldConnecticut.gov economic dash development. As you can see on the left hand side, there's a lot of buttons on COVID. Um, so we, we will try to post things as, as, as they do come up uh, and, and as we get uh, better information, try to share it with you. A lot of these are just links to other web pages that are, uh, that are uh, out there for, uh, for people. So, uh, but it's a good resource. I mean, we don't begin to think that we're, we're um, that, that, that we get all the solutions up there, but uh, we try to, I try to keep it as updated as I can on there. So um, let me uh, get out of my share screen now if I can. Uh, <laughs> figure this out. Uh, oh, there we go. Right up on top. It says stop sharing. 
Uh, very so, good. Uh, very good. I'm so, impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, and, and you can always, uh, if you have a question or, or, or uh, uh, I'm going to try that again. If you have a question or, or, or want to get a, uh, if you do want to, let's see. Uh, Okay, let me try to share another screen here. Jose, so, Jose there's a lot of good information out yeah. there, and um, if there, people are email, looking for it, okay. we can, you know, we yeah. can share it with them also. There's um, specific ones for restaurants, for hairdressers, right. um, for you know, outdoor dining. We can connect people if they need that information, and you can too. So um, don't be afraid to ask a question. I'm yeah, sure we can find something out. For offices, there's some great pieces on how to move back into your offices and how to do it the right way and do it safely. Yeah, and, and, and we, I think I've posted links to all those on our webpage, if not. I think that's the important thing with this committee. The, the expertise that uh, represented here is just, it, there's a wealth of information. So we want our businesses to know that they are not by themselves. They have extra arms, extra eyes, extra ears, helping them to be able to recover and recover systematically and successfully. So if you go to the website for the town or the chamber or for Goldman and York, there's, there's just so much information out there. And even if you get the information and you need someone to help you to decipher what it all means, I know that there were people that were having issues trying to fill out the applications for those grants and those loans um, that was being offered by the state, that was being offered by HEDCO. Some people were pulling their hair out saying, I need an accountant to help me. Um, sorry that this committee wasn't up at that time because help is here. Um, help is at the click of a fingertip. Help is at the other end of the phone. Um, that's why this committee is here. That's why we're going to be having another um, series of webinars, but when the webinars are finished, we are still here to provide all the support, um, answer all the questions, and if we don't have the answer, we promise we'll get the answer, and if by chance you're out there and you are home during COVID-19 and this nagging business idea just keeps on coming to you, pick up the phone, call Jose, call Mike, go through it with them. They can help you to, to, to sift it through and, and come here to Bloom and Bloomfield. Uh, so we're open. We're open for those uh, businesses that were open, that were closed and had to reopen. We're here for those businesses that didn't have to close but are um, facing some challenges. And we are definitely here for those who just want to take the leap after COVID-19 to becoming your own boss and opening your own business. So once again, here's an extension um, for you of a plethora of information and a wealth of knowledge. Thank you. Uh, that's a very good point. I think in, in addition to us, uh, you know, providing information and helping out, uh, we'd love to hear from people uh, with suggestions. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of time thinking about this and talking about it with different people, but that doesn't mean that we've covered everything by any means. So if you have thoughts or uh, suggestions of, of things that we might be able to do, uh, which would be helpful, we'd love to hear that, that feedback. Thank you, Mike. Thank you also, Jose. It's always good to know for those of us who functioned as planners at some point in our lives, that despite what's going on with our committee, that there's a parallel track that's a source of information and inquiry for anyone who needs help to call the town of Bloomfield through the planning office and economic development and try to get your comments noted. There's um, my, uh, there's our contact information that I okay, just uh, put so up there for people to write so down again. Noted. And uh, you write a, an email or give me a call, I'll be able to pass it along to whoever uh, needs to respond. Okay. Um, I would like to also note that today we also have with us David Mann. David is a member of Bloomfield Town Council. He is also the deputy mayor of the town of Bloomfield. And I wondered, David, with all of your contacts, both at the council table and constituents that you speak to on a regular basis, what are you hearing from business people about what their concerns are and how they are doing? 
Thank you, Michelle. Uh, first of all, let me uh, say thank you to all of you for the uh, interesting presentation and good information. As far as hearing from individuals within the community, the business community, that's been kind of quiet. Um, it's not my, my, my role necessarily for people to pick up a phone and call me about a lot of these things, but I do have some thoughts about it. And I, I thought Mike's presentation was excellent. I have one, uh, one question. Uh, clearly, there are peop the businesses that were uh, are, that de de depend on people walking in and who would be the most COVID unlikely to show up, uh, still have to pay the rent, they still have to pay their mortgage, or they still have to pay their investors. It occurs to me that all of, all of the above uh, who have uh, deals on paper with expected returns on investment have to take into account what's going on in an attempt not to lose their entire investment, we should be willing to consider uh, a moratorium of some sort, whether it's the banks, even the investors. Uh, it's on the backs of, of the individuals who are trying to make a go of it and who have to take the day in and day out pain and agony uh, to determine whether or not they're going to survive and the anxiety that comes from that. It would be helpful if we, uh, to me, it would see uh, if, if some of the shopping centers and some of the shopping own shopping center owners, we're talking here about retail, or even some of the renters of commercial other com commercial enterprises, uh, were had had a chance to comment, had a chance to look at: Do you want something, or do you want nothing? It, it seems to me, and from your outlook of another, this could be another 12 months, we could lose a lot more businesses who, if they're required to still pay that monthly premium. So I don't know if this town could play a role in that respect of putting together some of these major players to see what we can do to soften the blow, so to speak. Is that a, Mike, you're involved with a lot of shopping centers. You know what they go through. And I was just wondering if that's something that would make some sense to you. Yeah, it's a, it's a obviously, uh, it's a debate that's raging out there right now is uh, some form of moratorium on commercial rents. Uh, you know, and I'll, I'll focus just on commercial rents. That same debate is going on with respect to residential rents and, and, and home mortgages as well. But I'll stay focused on commercial rents. The, you know, it's a, it's a uh, financial chain, if you will, uh, starting, uh, if you want to start with the tenant, it starts with the tenant having enough customers and generating enough cash flow to pay their landlord in, ter in terms of the rent. And then their landlord can then turn around and pay uh, their mortgage on their property, as well as the investors who put their equity, uh, their investment into the shopping center, or office building, whatever it is. And then, uh, in, if the bank stops getting their payments, they've got uh, you know they didn't they didn't make the money. They got the money from people who invested in them <laughs> and deposited it with them. So at the end of it, the other end of the chain, really, I, I think, is a combination of state and federal government agencies. Uh, uh, to me, the solution, if 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 there's a if there is a solution, uh, the solution probably starts with some sort of uh, tax credit or tax. Uh, uh, program at the federal and state level that would uh, enable uh, that chain to come down eventually back down. So in other words, uh, there would be a financial incentive or a financial benefit to a landlord uh, if he grants a rent moratorium to his tenants. Uh, you know, whether we'll see that or not, I, I don't know. But <laughs> pull, to pull one group out of it and say, you should, uh, provide a moratorium, whether it's just the banks or just the landlords. I, I don't see that as being uh, likely or, or even workable. You know, it's just uh, you, you can't single out one segment of the industry and say, well, you guys should bear a greater portion of the financial pain that's out there. So I think it has to flow one way or another. Uh, now, the other option is additional funding given to the other end of the financial chain being the tenant in the form of additional PPP money or EIDL money. And I guess that's a possibility. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what the right answer is. That, that's sort of an economic policy question that's out of my, uh, <laughs> my, my area of expertise. Yeah. But I think it's gotta be, it, it's gotta be a holistic approach. You know, there, there's a lot of people involved in this financial chain, all of whom went into the financial arrangements with an understanding that they would get paid <laughs> all they have, investor or, or lender. 
uh, and if you you can't single out one group and say, well, we're just going to decide you shouldn't get paid. Uh, so I think it's got to come from the government, either from the bottom up in the form of more PPP money, or from uh, the top down in the form of some kind of tax uh, beneficial uh, tax program that would be tied to providing uh, a moratorium. But I, I do think it's a it's a a really important uh, discussion that you know as much as the, the it's being talked about I don't see a lot of substantive discussions about it there's a lot of talk around the issue uh, but if if we're genuinely thinking this is going to last another eight to ten to twelve months uh, you know that that bank debt and uh, real estate uh, payments I mean those are those are rocks of uh, financial obligations you can't change those much uh, in, in terms of reducing your costs or something you know they, they have to be paid so uh, I think that it's going to take action from the state and federal government to do it you know I don't see the town being able to participate much in that uh, and you know we've had people suggest that maybe the town should uh, uh, defer the payment of property taxes on commercial property I don't see that as a viable alternative Town, the towns are not, not talking about Bloomfield specifically. Every, every town uh, needs that cash flow to continue operating. And it's critical to the business community and, and, the, and the citizens of the town that the uh, local government continue operating the way it always has. You know, those are services that are, they're on the ground, on the street, uh, essential services, uh, far more than any other branch of government. And uh, so I don't see that the town can simply say, well, we'll defer the payment of property taxes and we'll borrow that money from somewhere uh, to make up the shortfall. That doesn't stri strike me as a good strategy. So I, I think if, uh, if anyone listening to this uh, wants to engage on it, my advice would be contact your legislator, both at the state and federal level and encourage them to look at either additional PPP money or some sort of tax uh, benefit program uh, that would uh, that would help uh, with landlords and lenders. Oh, can I follow up with another question? Um, you mentioned uh, assistance for PPE equipment and such. I it seems to me that the businesses, the few businesses that I have uh, had a chance to frequent and talk to, it seems as though they're they're just trying to keep the doors open. I can't, yeah. I can't look at their books. I don't know whether or not they're making enough money to pay, pay their notes or anything, much less earn a profit. So I, I, I would have to wonder what difference uh, even a grant for PPE would do under these circumstances. Um, uh, it seems that it would, I don't know whether or not your questionnaire or the next questionnaire could get dig, you know, dig deeper down to find, to, to maybe get an, a, a, some sort of a response to where the businesses are. Uh, but I can't imagine they're functioning anywhere near what their uh, yeah. business plan happened to be before this all started. Yeah, uh, we should, David, we should make not, clear to the audience that the, what we're talking about is PPP, PPP, which is Paycheck Protection Program, as oh, opposed oh. to PPE, oh, which okay. is Personal not Protective PPE. Equipment. Oh, so Paycheck Protection, obviously, is, is what it is. So. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, if you look at hotels, I mean, they're in, in terrible financial condition in most cases. Uh, the Hilton Hotel in, in uh, Hartford is, it will be up for auction shortly. It was in the newspaper the other day. And we know from the work we do that the hotel companies have virtually shut down. I mean, there's just, so then, then it goes from those guys to sit down restaurants and on up the chain. Everybody is experiencing a level of pain. Uh, convention centers, I mean, they're, they're not, they're, it's not a matter of percentage of business, they're just out of business. Uh, so depending on what sector you're looking at, the pain is, uh, is severe to, uh, to bad. But, you know, we are seeing in, in retail uh, and in some food and beverage uses, uh, some recovery, August was better, um, certainly significantly better in May. Uh, I would say we were seeing, you know, people saying they'll be lucky to do 25 to 30 percent of, of their normal volume. By August, that number had come up in many businesses to 50 to 60 percent, depending on what kind of business they're in. Uh, but you're right, uh, David, that the, you know, you can't, that's not sustainable. 
uh, over the long term. And it, e even if they can cut their costs so that they can operate at 50% of revenue and still break even, what that means on the street is a lot of suppliers that aren't getting purchases, purchase orders for business uh, supplies, and a lot of employees that aren't uh, being called into work or have been furloughed. Um, those aren't good circumstances. So it's sort of this this rolling tragedy, unfortunately. And uh, it was encouraging to see in the current today that uh, Connecticut is at 86%, the economy is at 86% of it where it was before COVID. That was yeah. amazing to me. I, I just had no idea we were that, doing that well. I think that's a good indication. Yeah, it is. That, that's taking into account a lot of industrial uh, uses that have gone back. And uh, uh, But the, the story on the street in small businesses continues to be difficult. So we, don't run, so we don't run out of time. I'm sorry, who did I interrupt there? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Suzette. I was just trying to say, and one of the things that we can do to help our local small businesses is to shop local, mm -hmm. right? So I have had the opportunity of talking to some of the restaurants and some of them have pivoted like Isaac's Bagel. They are busy. Breakfast and lunch is just their busy time. And I've been at both of those um, events. Um, but some of the other restaurants like um, Republic or um, Carbone's um, or um, Elizabeth, they're doing most of their business on with delivery, um, yeah. with pickup mm -hmm. orders. Um, they're up, doing great with delivery. So the only thing that we can say to our listening audience, yeah. if you are not a business owner, please support our small businesses. If you go in, um, I went in just this past weekend with my cousin and my aunt. The great thing is we were we a were able to pick our own seat. <laughs> we had um, there were other people in the restaurant, but we felt very safe being there. The, the, the service staff was wonderful. I think they were excited that people were just in the restaurant. If you're going to order, so Friday nights and Saturday nights in our household is takeout. And we will make sure that we order from our Bloomfield businesses, even if we're just picking up. Um, so please, those that are listening, please shop local. There's... Uh, Thai, there's Italian, there's American, there's anything that I've forgotten. You can find it here. <laughs> you can find Portuguese. it. Portuguese. Portuguese, thank you. You can <laughs> find it here. Um, and that's what's going to help our businesses in our community bounce back. Um, and that's going to be the important thing. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good comments. We have 15 minutes of our time. So to keep time sensitive, because I know everybody has a busy day. And to get the last 15 minutes of the discussion started, I will provide, as I promised, some very rough survey results, just generally, and ask everyone to comment or ask questions, particularly about those things that surprise you to hear, or that you thought would be the case. And I would like to, to tell everyone that the um, survey that Denise constructed has the representatives of the following business categories, food service, personal service, construction, healthcare, and even interior landscaping. And the, the percentages that I'm gonna give you, as I said, are just very rough and very general. Of all of the respondents, 50% of them use social media to communicate with their customers. 60% of them had websites. Seven out of 12 or 60% roughly had customer lists, but even better, 100% of them are open. So that was wonderful to hear. Um, some of them did have fears of close, closing, depending upon how long this challenge to them lasts. They are monitoring very closely. They, to a, a person who, uh, to a business that responded, they all said that their business was about 20% down. They thought the risk of their closing was low, but they will consider to monitor that. One seemed not to be so optimistic about being able to keep going. Um, the feelings with regard to 
business certainty when asked the question about continuing your business to December 31st of 2020, there was a half and half response for the majority of the respondents. Half said some, they were somewhat negative about that. The other half said they were positive. And then the outliers who were neutral said they didn't know where they would be. And they were concerned about that. So those opinions, I was absolutely so happy that nobody thought they had to imminently close. Some of the concerns that they have, and I'm sure Mike will be interested in these, are supply chain concerns. Anyone who goes to the grocery store will know that that's a reality of our life nowadays, right? Don't, don't you know that? Um, they were concerned about lack of specific products unique to what they did being able to be purchased. There just aren't any of those products and keeping an inventory of enough products and being con not being concerned about running out of the, cust the uh, products that they need to serve their customers. Half of them said, sorry, Bloomfield, but Bloomfield taxes are too high. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't surprise people in general, but the taxes really seem high when your business is down 20% too, and when you're not sure if you're gonna be open. So that's always something to keep in mind. Areas for improvement. Um, two businesses thought that elected officials, state and federal, could be informed of our needs for a better response with regard to what they need. They were also concerned that they can only reach these people during the business day. And for some of them, that's very difficult. Um, I just wonder, and perhaps um, Mayor Suzette could comment at, at some point about um, whether or not part of that communication could be assisted by the health district. Maybe they could provide supplementary information to go out to business above and beyond what they do. Um, a next question was whether or not businesses thought cold weather would result in their doing less business or providing food service. And everyone thought that was a concern. There were also two respondents or one respondent who had concern about aging staff. And I wondered in reading that if they were concerned about their aging staff having concerns about having contact with people who were COVID-19 positive and thus they're not real thrilled to be coming back to work. I can understand that. Another real challenge is cleaning and disinfecting and the number of persons that it takes to be able to accomplish that and being concerned that you're doing it enough times a day. Um, I think only one person even referred to the fact that they weren't having a question with permitting costs, which is a good thing, Jose. Um, the one thing that I wanted to know is people who were talking about um, installing dividers, like in restaurants or cubicles or whatever, would they have to pay for permits to do that? No, I don't think the dividers uh, themselves require any kind of building permits. Uh, well, you know, unless it was some fancy, uh, again, a full wall or something like yes. that. Uh, just, just the, you know, the, the plexiglass dividers yes. I've seen. Yes. We have them here in our office. Uh, well, all, you know, all, it's probably uh, important that they know that because yeah. it sounds like um, there's a concern about doing it. Yeah, maybe a, a fact, you know, frequently yeah. asked question kind of fact sheet on our webpage would probably be a good idea to, to handle some of those simple questions. Now I will ask Denise to correct everything that I said that was wrong. <laughs> or, no, you, you, you or did, or did you, you did great. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. Um, you know, I think the we even though it was a lower number of responses than we would have liked, we do still have the survey open and we're gonna keep it open so that if people want to respond, we welcome their input on it. Um, so I want to make sure that that's out there and if they excuse me, if they can't get to the link, um, they can email me at drobidou, R-O-B-I-D-O-U-X, at gomanyork.com, and I can send them the survey. Um, 
Vera, who wasn't able to be on the call with us, your co-chair, um, also put it up on the Chamber's website. So mm -hmm. we really want people's input on this. Um, you know, it, it's, it's important that we stay positive. It's important that we communicate with these people. But unless we know what they need and what they want, um, we're doing ourselves and them a disservice. So I think keeping those lines of communication open, because, you know, it's, it truly isn't just Bloomfield. And Suzette, you know the saying, we're all in this together. And we truly are, because everybody's business has been touched by this. So I think it's important, keep the lines of communication open. We have a plethora of, of communications that we can help people out if it's a restaurant guide and how to communicate with your customers and you know communicate safety how to set up your hair salon the right way we're you know we're there how to set up your office the right way so we have the information for them and we can help them um, it's a learning curve and it's going to continue to curve so so what did we was about communication and COVID-19 has taught me that we have to find better ways to communicate. Um, we spoke with John Karras from the Bloomfield Journal, uh, Michelle, Vera and myself, and he was very open to doing whatever he could do mm -hmm. to help us to get our messaging out. So I do believe that we're going to provide information to the messenger that you can probably get on a weekly or bi-weekly basis that we can get information to you. The website, I'm sorry, I'm, the website is available. Um, everyone's um, information as far as being able to email is available to you. Our phone numbers, I know that all the counselors, their phones go to their personal phone, <laughs> their personal numbers, and that's on all the time. You can email us. Um, I do believe, it's funny you say about the health district, they will be at our um, council meeting tonight just giving some COVID updates. So I believe that the, the, the communication has to keep on going. It has to be top down, us trying to provide the information that we know and that we have, but it also has to be bottom up, you letting us know exactly what you need, right? Because there's no one broad brush that's gonna touch every sector. I can tell you that if you go into the restaurants at the bars, they do have the dividers. I can tell you if you go get your nails done, now you're sitting there and you're almost like in your own little cubicle getting your manicure and your pedicure, by the way. Um, we know that there's shields up at the bank and shields up at the grocery store. So I know that the businesses are trying as much as possible to follow guidelines to make sure that people feel safe. With that, once again, I'm gonna just reiterate it. Information has to flow both ways, top down, and bottom up. We're going to use the messenger. I'm going to see if we can um, do some things with the Everbridge message through the police department, just giving out information. There's information on our website, on Goldman and York's website, on the Chamber's website. Um, we can try to do email blasts. If you once again give us your information, we'll try to get the information out to you. Our goal is to make sure that we that we that we recover and that we recover successfully for all our businesses and the new ones that will be <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Okay, we're going down to the wire. So each of you will have one minute to compose your headline to businesses in Bloomfield your message with regard to COVID-19 as we proceed. I will use my minute to remind everyone of the other webinars coming up. We will start with David and I'm timing everybody. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I think there's a lot of enthusiasm on behalf of those who are here to try and assist the people out there who are struggling. Uh, we. We can empathize, but we don't truly understand the details that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. We may not be able to help, but we can encourage and find other people who might be able to help. So it's, a, so it's with that spirit in mind that uh, we, we ask you to hang in there and uh, stay tuned and stay in touch. And we might even have to consider putting up a business hotline at some point where there's one, one source of, of, of where you can all call, call in. So it's not as confusing to, well, which one was I supposed to call? I can't remember. 
So that's something else that as we go along, I hope that we'll be able to improve our communications and get more people participating on this call. Thank you, David. Mike? You know, I'm always amazed at the creativity and resiliency of small businesses. Just two quick anecdotes. I was in a restaurant for one of my first lunch meetings after this uh, uh, thing started. And when I opened my menu, immediately there was a, a piece of paper inside just in big letters. It said, thank you for coming. We really appreciate your business. This has been a tough time, but you being here today is an essential part of our recovery. And then below that, it said, take this sheet with you, and it had a series of specials. Mm -hmm. And I thought, boy, that's, this guy's on his game. The other one was I was in a small business, a takeout business, and as I left, the cashier handed me a little marketing thing with the same sort of thing, just a little thing saying, you know, kind of a coupon with some money off. And I thought, you know, that's, that's again, the resiliency and the creativity of small businesses is what's going to get these people through it. And I hope everybody, if they take anything away from today, it's that stay focused and keep, uh, keep trying to be uh, creative, but keep communicating and we'll get through it. Thank you, Mike. Jose? Yeah, uh, I think the key to this is, uh, you know, this committee is called the Long Range uh, uh, Recovery Committee. So we're, we're running it for the long haul. Uh, and, and obviously uh, any suggestions and, and any success stories that we hear that we can replicate, uh, we'll bring uh, to the table and, and try to do it here. Uh, other towns are doing wonderful things also, uh, and, and we're not ashamed to copy uh, if, if we find something good, but we That's need right. to know uh, from the businesses uh, what works for them and, and what type of uh, uh, things that the town can do to, to facilitate that, whether it be regulatory or, or otherwise. Uh, so, um, you know, we're in it for the long haul. We hope you're, you all also can be in it for the long haul, and there's just any setbacks we'll be able to uh, quickly recover from them. Very good. Denise? Well, I think what I want to say, you know, we talk a lot about the small businesses and that's what I get to deal with. Um, being a small business owner myself for over 30 years, I know some of the headaches they're going through. Um, but I also know people in big business and they're going through the same headaches right now. Um, but know and look for the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, we are resilient people. Um, and I think businesses in this day and age have known that, you know, you have to be agile, you have to be able to turn and change something at the, you know, within a minute to see if it's going to work for you. But I think, and I'm going to stress, communication is key. Talk to people, talk to us, talk to the town. We're here. We're really here to help people. Very good. Mayor DeBeatham Brown. So everything everyone just said, <laughs> you're not alone. You are not alone. We are right here. We are at the end of your arm. When you feel like you cannot stretch any further, we are right there to help you to recover and to recover successfully. And if you have to pivot, we're here to pivot with you. Your success is our success. And even though seasons change, we're still blooming here in Bloomfield. Very good. Okay, I will use my time to list the additional webinars that we have planned for everyone. Number two will be Focus on Restaurants. It will be held Monday, September 21st, 2020, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And the focus will be Moving Forward with Change. The third webinar is Focus on Retail, Personal Service, and Fitness, Tuesday, September 29th. 2020, 3 to 4 p.m. The focus is local customer communication and the importance of being agile. Little play on words there. Number four, focus on the future, weathering the storm. Monday, October 5th, 2020, from 3 p.m. until 4 p.m. The focus will be planning for uncertainty and financial stability. Check the town website so you can see these all listed. And I agree with everyone else that communication is not only key, communication is everything. Thank you all for joining us today and join us on September 21st. We look forward to having you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job.
Hey, we're off the recording.